I think she has evolved. I mean, she came in originally as a sort of support to Kyle Canning, um, Chris Milligan, and she was just the grandma who sort of stayed home and, and you know, asked him questions about his life. And now she's, uh, you know, an Erinsborough businesswoman. She's the executive bar manager of the Waterhole. Um, she has quite a, a substantial family around her now with her son, uh, Gary and now her granddaughter Xanthi and uh, and Kyle came back to visit about this time last year and so she owns the house she clearly runs a drug lab or something but she owns the house uh, and she's just recently had it um, redecorated and um, she's really quite really the matriarch of the street now so she I'm um, came in as a sort of subsidiary character but I think I'm pretty damn important now. <laughs> Absolutely, because uh, when he came in to play Kyle's father, basically, uh, that was for closure for Kyle, mm. uh, he came in for six weeks and I knew uh, when they asked me about who I wanted to play that role, because he was playing my son, of course, but he was more important for Kyle. Um, and then they told me it was going to be Damien Richardson. I knew his work very well, but I didn't know him personally. And I only had to work with him about three or four days, and I thought, oh, this is extraordinary. It was sort of like, in a weird way, match made in heaven. We really were on the same wavelength. And so he was in for six weeks, and from that moment on, I just really, really annoyed Jason Herbison um, until he eventually brought him back full time. But uh, and the way they brought him back was that they introduced Xanthi first, um, who is the wonderful Lily Vandermeer, who is just an extraordinary young actress and and has learnt so much in the eighteen months she's been in the show. And um, and he, of course he came back as her father. You know that I didn't even know he had her. You know because nobody knows anything in Erinsborough. We all find it out. Um, and uh, so now I'm really happy to be with the two of them because we all get on tremendously well. Oh yes, all that Finn storyline was, I think, uh, eventually was handled really, really well because um, it was difficult for her because she, she's, um, Lily has only just turned 17 herself and so she was finding the stuff um, difficult to handle um, and the producers were great and talked her through it and the writers talked her through it and then her and I had a long talk about it and I think the way she played it with such pure innocence and sort of wide-eyed wonder it, it didn't become creepy from her side very creepy from his side but it was not creepy from her side it was just uh, you know idol worship basically of this teacher which I think we can all relate to it, it wasn't a sexual thing with her at all which I think was great and she played it with such openness that it, it was just a very mature way to handle a storyline Yes, although I'm happy to say that they don't let a claw away back too too soon because, you know, sometimes we get over things very quickly. Um, they're not with her. They're, she's only just recently, just in the last couple of weeks, we did some scenes where she's starting to come good again and that's about a good three months after what you're seeing on air. I think, well, as far definitely as far as Australia is concerned, I think probably what makes Neighbours different to most of the other soaps, um, definitely Home and Away in Australia and the, the soaps that you have here, which I've seen a little bit of while I've been here, is that we have a lot more comedy in in the show. Um, it, yes, it is dramatic and it's always about, you know, triangles and, and all that sort of stuff, love triangles, this person or this person and who's going to get that person and are they going to get together? Oh, they nearly did, but no, they're not going to. All of that stuff and then all the drama. But we also have very quite strong, very strong comic lines too. Uh, often, you know, with, well, in the past it was with Luke Carpenter and myself, but now it's Carl Kennedy and myself. He's my new and annoying one that I have for fights with. Um, the Cannings can have really funny storylines when we were on Family Feud on that um, that uh, 
quiz show. That was a very funny and well-written storyline. Um, all sorts of uh, funny stuff occasionally. Um, and Ryan Maloney, who plays Tony, loves working with um, Damien Richardson, who plays Gary, because they can have some funny stuff together. Um, and, of course, Susan Kennedy and I often, you know, get to the point where she hoses me and I throw dirt at her, which is, you know, really grown up. Uh, but uh, I think the fact that we have comedy quite strongly in the storylines as well as the drama, I think that's what makes us different. There's a new family have arrived on the street, the Rebeccas, mm -hmm. um, and I have become Dippy's best friend, which is, is terrific, but I really would like to work a little bit more with Shane, um, her her husband, who is um, Toadie's brother, uh, played by Nick Coglin. He's a fantastic actor and he's such great fun to work with. And we've had a couple of scenes together which we make a real meal of because we only... So far, I think we've only had four lines to each other, but we really carry on as though it's, you know, the love affair of the century, really. He's just real fun to work with and he's such a great actor, so I'd like to work a little bit more with him. I hope so. Uh, I was just saying earlier today that, um, unfortunately, when I first came in, I had a lot to do with Stefan, and, of course, I've known him for years because we were in prisoner together for about eight or nine years, um, uh, eight or nine months, weeks, I mean. Um, but uh, we And we had a lot to do with each other when I first came into the show, but for some reason I bought his house mm -hmm. um, with all that money I've got and, um, and I haven't had very much to do with him in the last oh, eight or nine months cause he's, because he's the owner of the ho motel now mm -hmm. and he's not in Lassiter's as much. He occasionally wanders into the waterhole but nowhere near as much as I would like him to. Um, It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few weeks because um, the, a storyline develops, which I can't tell you about, I'll have to kill you. Um, a storyline develops where he gets involved with our family a bit um, uh, because there's been a bit of heartbreak. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there because I love working with Stefan. He's just delightful and he's, he's an icon, basically, because he's just so good at the character. He has made that character work kind of like Tony Soprano in The Sopranos. He's the guy you love to hate, but it, everybody loves him, you know? Uh, well, really, I just like her to be... In, still involved with her family because, as I've said before, I really enjoy working with Damien and Lily and I, I think that dynamic works very well and the audience seems to like it and I know the crew like it. Um, so I'd like to see more family storylines. Uh, but um, I'm hoping that they will bring back the character of Clive Gibbons because I'm uh, on air at the moment, sort of, we're, you know, walking around each other. But um, it, it, that storyline finishes in the next few weeks and then he goes but they're talking about bringing him back and I really loved working with him so it would be nice to have something like that in, in her life um, not like anybody who's going to move in she doesn't want anybody living with her but um, you know it would be nice to have somebody that she can talk to other than Gary and Xanthi and Susan Kennedy when she feels like talking to me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's talk of more cannings, but uh, there's always talk of things. And as I've found over the last five and a half years I've been in the show, sometimes they'll tell you something and you set your heart on it and then it doesn't happen because, you know, they've had another storyline meeting and it doesn't fit with something. And so they have. we have mentioned a character um, uh, way back, uh, another, another half-sister to Xanthi, but I don't know whether she will come in or not come in, to be honest. But it, um, it would be nice, I know he's in LA at the moment, but it would be nice to see Chris Milligan back for a little while. And I, I think if he came back to Australia and he was not, he was at a loose end, I think he would be quite happy to come back to the show for a short time. Um, but the fans are often asking about all these other cannings that were in the show before I came. Mm. I don't know who they are, so I don't particularly care about meeting them. So, um, Dane and Harley and somebody, they want to meet somebody called Jackie who we've never seen, but apparently they're people that Kyle used to talk about. But um, 
I, I don't know who they are, but apparently they're in my family. But uh, we'll wait and see. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Damien and I are writing a television series together at the moment. Um, uh, and I would love to ha have a go at producing. Okay. Um, uh, I'm really enjoying the writing process with him. Um, uh, and I'd like to eventually, I mean, I don't think they'd give me a go straight off, but I would really like to be able to produce. I've directed a play. I directed a play with Damien and Kate Kendall last, not last year, year before, and I loved that process. That was fantastic. I've directed before, but it was great to do it with uh, two such fine actors. Um, and there's other things that I want to do with my life as well. So... Um, Luckily, Neighbours at the moment, it gives you the ability to be able to do some other things on the side every now and again. And um, so I'm hoping that, you know, we, we'll be able to eventually get this other television series off the ground. Yeah. Oh, no, I want, I want to go global. I want to go sort of universal. I want to go out into the galaxy with it. No, um, it would be nice. I mean, we're trying to get it off the ground in Australia, which is proving a little bit difficult because it's a bit edgy right. and they're a little bit scared. Um, but uh, it would be nice to get it, um, you know, overseas because, of course, that's where the recognition is. Not when you're an actor, no. I think they allowed... Um, Scott Major, who played Lucas Fitzgerald, oh, yeah. they allowed him to do a number of attachments while he was still an actor on the show. And I, when I first started uh, five and a half years ago, I was only a guest for the first six months. Mm -hmm. And so I had six weeks on, three or four weeks off, six weeks on, three or four weeks off. And I did two attachments during that time, two directing attachments. Um, and... Last year, Kate Kendall, after she her contract was um, uh, not picked up, she started to do attachments while she was acting, but they, that was a special situation because they wanted her to start directing this year and she's just recently finished her first whole block. Oh. And, uh, it, and she's phenomenal. She's just taken to it like a duck to water. I think she still wants to act and so she should because she's... She's an, an amazing actress, but she's also now proving to be a really good director and she learnt so quickly. I am so jealous. <laughs> yeah, I, well, well, definitely as a favourite to watch. I wasn't involved in it in any way, but I was really um, gripped by the whole storyline of Sonia and Toady that was on, you know, basically the whole first half of this year mm -hmm. um, with the uh, with Madeline West and the young girl um, uh, Mika who plays Willow I thought that I thought it was really interesting because the ratings really went up in Australia uh, over that period of time and I think it was because it was a brilliant storyline acted by brilliant actors real actors and and I think the fans really responded to that in a big way um, and I thought particularly Eve and Ryan who plays Sonia and Toady I just thought they were outstanding and the whole breakdown of their marriage and um, the aftermath which is still on air of course at the moment mm. I thought was handled really well by the writers because they didn't let it all just you know um, tie itself up in a little bow and suddenly they're back together again they're still not back together at this stage, so um, it's uh, it's great to see because it's like real life, and and I thought it really elevated the show into another sphere. I mean, I think they're two very different shows, very different shows. For a start, in Australia, and I can only talk from that point of view. Mm -hmm. In Australia, um, Home and Away is on at seven o'clock at night, which means that they can be much more edgy than we can be at 6.30 because that's the cut-off point. Yeah. Um, so they can have a lot more murders and violence and drugs and um, that sort of thing than we can. I mean, I remember we had one um, 
uh, episode about drugs being sold in the waterhole and we had to just show the plastic bag. We weren't even allowed to show the powder in the plastic bag. So uh, censorship and the, that whole thing of the grading is difficult for us. So, um, And they have the beach and all of that, um, which we don't have, but we are doing a lot more guerrilla shoots where we're going outside of um, Ngunnawadding and they're letting us out and uh, and we go out with a, a much smaller crew and shoot things like you know near a river or um, in an art gallery or something like that, which is I think makes the whole show look really different. And I think it's great from that point of view. I don't think Neighbours is trying to be home in a way. Um, and I think they have their strengths and their weaknesses, as indeed so do we. And I think they're two very different shows. It's like oranges and apples. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to The Fan Carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.